We're getting some sound bites out of Seattle, a Seattle sports podcast, Brock Heward and Mark, uh, Mark Matt, Marcus. Sorry about just Mike. 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 I mean, it was one of those. Ball Golly, ball we, we are sorry, Mike. We do apologize. Mark, Matt, they had Pete Carroll on their podcast, though, and Pete Carroll was wide open. Now, presented by Alaska Airlines, who has more flights than just to Alaska, I've been told. Yeah. Yep. Alaska Airlines has to deal with Russell Wilson. I believe they gave him a 757. Now, I don't know if Alaska Airlines is still going to be locked up with Russell Wilson <laughs> after the podcast that they are certainly a sponsor of Lower Left Corner of, had Pete Carroll on, and Pete Carroll... Pretty transparent and candid about what this game meant to the Seattle Seahawks. Who knows if they'll be able to get up next week after this emotional dump, it seemed like, beating Russell Wilson. Go ahead and run this from Pete Carroll just the other day. I didn't need the validation. I just wanted it. I just wanted to win. You know, I wanted to win for every, all of the reasons that, that, that come along with this one. Uh, maybe as much as anything is representing the guys that have played before. It meant a lot to those guys. And uh, um, I was so thrilled to, to be able to hug those guys up and see them and look them in the eye. And, Why did and, it mean and, so and, much you know, to them? Yeah, you figured that out. <laughs> you they, figured that out. Um, <laughs> but it was really meaningful, <laughs> and they really wanted it. And uh, I knew we were playing for a You're lot broke. more than – just the regular stuff and, and uh you know, we have a um we we have a real connection with our, with the history of and the legend i don't do we have a legends a, a legends group that those guys would fit into yeah that, that they all belong in it you know and and uh they feel it and they love the fact that they played here and they love the, seeing us do well and and in this night they they realize what you know there was a, a big opportunity and and they uh and a big statement to be made you know um you know, the game isn't about an individual player here or there. It's about team. This is the ultimate team sport, for, and it's been stated so many times before. It takes everybody. Uh -huh. And, and uh, sometimes when so much focus goes, you know, it, it just, you know, it just rubs guys wrong, I guess, or whatever. But uh, um, I'm thrilled that, that we won that game. Brock Heward wanted a question. I don't know what his follow-up was. <laughs> yeah. He had been asking for it since the middle of Pete's answer, and I don't think he expected Pete to continue to elaborate yeah. on everything that he did, and we appreciate the Seattle Sports YouTube for getting that clip into the sports media world. But Pete Carroll said, uh, why do you think this one meant more? Well, you can figure <laughs> that out. Yeah. You can figure that out. And he said a multitude of reasons and everything like that. It's not about one player. It's about the team. It sounds like all the anonymous shit that we had been hearing and had been trickling out over the last couple of weeks yeah. and then them booing the fuck out of him coming out there. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, that's what happened, huh? And I think Pete Carroll's speech the night before was, remember Russ said he can't win with you guys. We can't win here. We mm -hmm. got to go somewhere else. He can't become a top five oh, quarterback yeah. here. That... That's what that sounded like to me, and I don't want to be the classic media guy that says it. Pete Carroll fucking hates Russell Wilson. Hates his guy. Have you? Do, is that what you heard too, or is that just I something? Def you definitely heard it. Uh, I, I don't know about hate. I don't know why he would hate him. You know, guy got help get you a Super Bowl champion championship. You know, won a ton of games there. Um, was surprised by the um, the booze from from the twelves to Russ. You know. I, it's, it's, it's a game. It's an opponent. Um, when Peyton came back to Indy, the crowd cheered him on, uh, when he, at least when he came out. And then once we started playing, you know, they obviously got after him. But um, that was weird. But uh, hearing Pete talk, I feel like he said a lot without without saying, uh, you know, too I, much. I still think he said a lot. Yeah. Yeah, like, he, he, didn't, lot. he didn't openly say, you know, I just want to hug those guys up. And it meant more to the guys that have been here before and played with him before, you know, mm -hmm. the people that basically felt like they got shit on by yeah. Russell Wilson and Team 3 in mm -hmm. there. It's almost... You know, I don't want to – listen, I'm a Team 3 fan. I got some of their merch. Of course. Yeah. I'm wearing some good man brand myself. Yeah, Love that's right. Let's ride. Have to. Let's, Let's ride. ride. Okay, I'm all in there. But whenever you start thinking back to how this all happened with Team 3 try, and Russ trying to stay babyface – in Team 3 basically saying, oh, oh, the offensive line's not that good. The offense isn't that good. He wants to be a top five quarterback. Doesn't think he'll be able to do it here in Seattle. And, like, you know, I assume Team 3 was telling Russ – Hey, we'll take all the heat. It'll be us that's saying it. You don't have to say anything. It sounds like that didn't work. It, no. it, it feels like feels like Pete Carroll's letting his team know exactly where they stand in Russ's life. And Russ, I assume bygones will be bygones at some point if they have success again. And in the future, he'll come back and he'll do that. Raise the, raise flag. the banner sure, and everything. At, at some point, that'll happen because yeah. they did have a lot of success. But it does feel like it ended not great over there. And Seattle getting that win. I don't know if we can judge that Seahawk team. Like, they're going to play that game every single week because it did feel like, hey, this one, 
This is our fucking moment to tell this guy to go fuck himself, it felt like. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I don't think that's that outlandish, really. Like, we joked about it, like, oh, Pete Carroll hates this guy's fucking guts. But then when you, like, the players talking about it after the game, like, how bad they wanted it. Shelby like, Harris. Like, yeah, you, yeah you guys would know, like, how He often, came over from Denver, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. trade him away. Yeah, that's exactly. what happens when he trade away a D-lineman, right. yeah. he said afterwards. Yeah. But how often does that happen where a guy switches teams and guys in the locker room that were just teammates with that guy are actually, like, Fuck this guy. We need to beat this guy. Like, that shit doesn't happen. And I think to to Connor's point yesterday, like with Peyton coming here and them cheering and everything, like Russell wanted out. Like they can they can say team three did yeah. whatever. Like he orchestrated a way for him to get out of Seattle. So I think all those guys are like, you know, and then who knows what kind of preferential treatment. Like he, he's kind of an eccentric guy anyway, so who knows how close he is with the team. Like he is a walking cliche. Like I think it's very possible that all those guys are like, yeah, fuck this guy. Think, he thought he was better than us. After yeah. the game, Darius, you said you noticed something I think that a lot of people did after the game on the field. Yeah, I mean, part part of it is, um, you know, he says, Russ says, and, and you know, I don't want to like jump on Russ if you don't know. Right, you know, we're yeah, fans. Yeah, Let's yeah, ride. Yeah. Great, great player. Um, I, you know, I think he's a, a great guy, at least from what I can see. But um, he does put a, out a lot of, I think, like it's bullshit. Kinda like, yeah, it's like bullshit. Like, and like, obviously, we can see through it. Like, your quarterback and a lot of these quarterbacks, a lot of them, especially the great ones, are me guys. Like, they want to win. They are team leaders. Have but to be. Me, yeah, they're, but you know they're me guys. I think Russ is a me guy. I think the people in the locker room, the people around the NFL knows that. He does the other stuff. Um, and like I said, nothing's wrong with that. A lot of them is, but when you come and you get in the podium and you give all the other stuff, that's when it, it's like, okay, like just be yourself. And then uh, on the field after the game, you know, which is always, especially when a quarterback comes back to their own place. Or anybody. Yeah, but mm -hmm. yeah, but especially the quarterback. You know, if it's Brady or Peyton or A-Rod, like, it's always going to be a, a circus of cameras and crew mm -hmm. where you, you almost have to get through them to be like, hey, man, good to see you. And, like, for, like, probably the first probably 30 seconds after the game, it was like he was just out there on an island. And that was, yeah. like, weird. Like, you've been in this locker room for, what, 10 years? Yeah. And, like, it should be, like, guys. Trainers. Like, the first few yeah. guys. Exactly. Equipment Payton came managers. back. It was trainers, security, equipment, media. Everybody just wanted to, you know, shake a hand. So that was uh, odd to see. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's week one. Hopefully those Broncos and, and Russ, you know, they, they ride and have a good year. And uh, same with Seattle, man. I was happy to see Geno come out and play yeah. like he did. Hell yeah. Ironically, within the system. AJ, whenever you hear that, though, it's hard not to be like, oh, they hated that fucking guy. And they were... How long did they? I don't know how long this was going on while he was still there. Like, this didn't just pop up out of nowhere. What was that? Team 3 got real mouthy. What was that? Two, two off-seasons ago, <laughs> yeah, right? COVID. Yeah. COVID, COVID, COVID off-season. Team 3 was saying the <laughs> offensive line ain't good. Team 3 was saying the offense isn't going to make him be a top-five quarterback of all time. Team 3 was thinking that they were going to take all the heat and babyface Russ was going to stay in the building, at least. And we talked about how... Remember when it was happening, we're like, well, these offensive linemen certainly heard this. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I, everybody in the room. First thing you said. Yeah, certainly heard this. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. We fucking stink. But yeah, we'll, you know what, you're right. We'll battle through not being able to walk for four days of the week, being offensive linemen just in general, to help save you. And let's get you top five, pal. Like, that's what we're here for. Not to win games, not to get playoff bonuses, not to create a legacy. But, yeah, we're not good enough to protect you. Like, that was my first reaction. Like, oh, the locker room's going to be like, hey, fuck this guy. And then those first couple of days of training camp, they were on press conferences going, all is good. All is good. All is Had to be from them then, AJ. Don't you think? Had to be. If not before then, I mean, I'm sure it was trickling out before that too. Like things were getting weird. I just don't like. What, was it, what is it? It's all like the individual stuff. It sounds like they're they're pissed that he felt like he wasn't a part of the team or he's trying to separate himself from the team. Well, team three is his team of itself. Right. Yeah. I mean, let's have team a little fucking respect for the arm doctor, <laughs> sure. uh, the hand coach, mm -hmm. spiritual Perk, healer, the spiritual yeah. healer, the tweeter, the yep. poster, mm -hmm. the Instagram. Peloton, 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 the gas Peloton, mask while he's riding the a bike. Mask, the cardio yeah. person, yeah, it's yep. cardio person. There's Peloton specialist. So that's Talk a team. Nail filer. Mm -hmm. It is about Body that guard. team. Yeah. But it's also about the Seattle Seahawks, which I think the Seahawks were trying to say, like, hey, man, we're not just here uh, to make you better. We're not just here. We're here to make the entire team better. And those anonymous stories that were leaking when that was all getting ugly. Yeah. Remember, he like, stormed out of a fucking meeting with Pete Carroll. Yep. Told him he didn't want to do it anymore or something like that. Like, there's some real beef, I think. Well, and I think that's what led credence to when we were talking about John Schneider, remember, went up to Trey Lance's pro day 
and they were talking about Russ maybe getting because we were saying like, hey, with, yeah, with all this stuff going on with his lineman, like, how, how does this guy go play for the Seahawks next year? And you know, Seattle fans were pissed because it was like, no, he he loves the city and all that kind of stuff. But I wouldn't be surprised if all it got to a boiling point. Then they were like, all right, fuck it, like let's go, let's draft someone this year, let's get this guy the fuck out of here. Like I can't do this anymore. And ultimately, a deal kind, wasn't it, to be and had. They, they couldn't yeah. happen. But I think it was right then and there. It's like, all right. We got one more year, this fucking guy, and then let's get him the hell out of here. So